So welcome to our morning verse by verse Bible study. We have come to the most uh, well-known and popular verse in the entire Bible, that is John 3.16. And we are actually looking at this uh, interaction between the Lord Jesus Christ and Nicodemus. The third chapter of John, verse 2 to verse 21, 19 verses, uh, record the interaction between Nicodemus, member of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And to him, to Nicodemus, Jesus says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The previous verse talks about, uh, it's always a continuity in the Bible. Previous verse, Jesus told Nicodemus, just as Moses left the snake in the desert, and man must be up. Everyone believes will have eternal life. Now, in the Old Testament time, in the book of Numbers, 21st chapter, we read, uh, uh, in the verse, first six verses, how when the problem was uh, uh, grumbling was there, God sent snakes to bite the people and they died. And the Lord told Moses, raise a bronze snake, make a bronze snake and lift it up. All those who look to that snake, bronze snake will live. So today we are called to look to Jesus. And I, as I shared last time, the New Testament is concealed in the Old Testament. And Old Testament revealed in the New Testament. And here's revelation of John 20, uh, Numbers 21 is actually Christ being lifted up on a cross. And after talking about how uh, those days they were saved by looking to the bronze snake, uh, the problem was snakes. And the solution was uh, an image in the form of a snake. The same way our problem today is sin. The solution is a sin offering who is Jesus Christ. And then next verse, the Lord tells Nicodemus, For God so loved the world. <clears throat> World meaning the people of this world. Sometimes people get confused with the 1 John chapter 2, 15 onwards, where the Lord tells disciples through John, don't love the world or anything in the world. Now that love refers to things of this world. But here John is seen refers to people of this world. For God so loved the world, meaning people of this world, that he gives only begotten son. Now this is again a confusing thing for many people. Was Christ... Uh, begotten, between a union, union between man and woman? No. Begotten actually means came from heaven onto earth. Begotten from heaven onto earth. He's the only one who came from heaven onto earth. In fact, the previous verse we read, previous verses, it says, no one has gone to heaven except the one who came from heaven. And uh, Jesus was begotten from heaven onto earth. The only one to have been uh, uh, been like that. That whosoever believes in him, our Bible also says, anyone who believes in him, the Greek was whosoever or anyone believes in him, will not perish but have everlasting life. So it's all a question of faith in Christ. We are saved through faith in Christ. And this is for every human being in the world. This gift of God is for all the people of this world because God loves everybody, even the Old Testament time. Psalm 145, verse 9. God is good to all. His compassion over all he has made. His compassion, mercy. By the way, the word mercy and compassion, same word in Greek or Elios. E-L-E-O-S. Mercy, compassion. For all people. And in fact, if you look at the 9th and the 11th chapter of Romans, uh, then we come to verse 32, we get confused. Because the, the Bible talks about God can have, can have compassion. Those who want to have compassion, he can have mercy in whom he wants to have mercy. Don't question God. We are the clay, he's a potter. A clay can't question the potter. Don't question uh, uh, the potter. He can have uh, grace in whomever he wants. And then the question comes, does, does it mean that only some people are chosen for heaven? Others are not uh, earmarked for heaven? The fact is, Romans 11.32 says, God has given all men over to disobedience that he may mercy on them all. He's given all men over disobedience that he may have mercy on them all. Compassion, mercy on all people. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son who came in heaven onto earth at the appropriate time that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life forever. By faith in Christ we are saved. Let's go next verse. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. 
Prince sent the son to condemn the world, to save the world. I'm going to read John 10.10. 10, uh, um, uh, so, Sushma, who's going to read today? Sushma or Shiny? Shiny is reading. I'm reading. Now. Okay, okay. John 10.10, 10, you read first, and then I'll give you some more verses to read also. John 10.10 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So Christ came to give us everlasting life and abundant life in this world. Everlasting life begins right here when you accept Christ and abundant life is conditional to our obedience. The thief or the devil comes to steal and kill and destroy. There's something that uh, John and James also didn't understand for quite some time. Now, let's read Luke chapter 9, uh, 51 to 55. And there's a footnote we also have to read somewhere in the middle of the uh, ABC or something, and footnote. So, if you have the Nenavi uh, Bible, look at the footnote also. Luke 9, chapter 51 to 55. Luke 9, 51 to 55. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. Look, I'm rebuking them. Look at the footnote. There's, you missed out the footnote. He tells them, uh, you know what what's pretty speaking. Son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Are you reading from the iPad version or the hard, hard copy version? Hard copy. It's the uh, revised version. I'll read the footnote as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you do not know what spirit you are of, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy the lives of human beings, but to save them. But to save them. After three and a half years of being with Jesus, they hadn't understood that. Just because the village people didn't want to receive them, they want to call fire and destroy people. And the Lord said, you do not know what spirit you speak. This is not a spirit of God by which you are speaking. So Christ came to save people, not destroy them. The thief, the evil one came to uh, destroy, but Christ came to save. Again, we read Luke 5, 31, 32, please. Luke chapter 5, 31, 32. Jesus answered, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came for sinners. He came to bring sinners to repentance, not to destroy sinners, but to save them. <clears throat> now, at the essence of, his, of, of the gospel, to save. Okay, let's look at verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Now, why Son can them already? Because already people are in sin. When you are in sin, we are heading towards hell. Whether you believe in, whether you uh, 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 are an atheist or believe in some other God, there's only one God, and that, and that God we can approach only through Jesus. Maybe an atheist may not believe anything, but they're still in sin. Because of sin, we die. At one point of time, the Lord told the Jews, very profound statement, very powerful statement. This is found in John 8, 24. Could you read that also, please? Uh, John 8, chapter verse 24. <clears throat> John 8, 24. I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am He. Okay, my version says, uh, I've told you, you will die in your sins. If you do not believe I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sin. Meaning you are in sin, already you are in sin, already you are standing condemned already. But if you don't believe in Jesus, you will remain in that, you will remain in death. That means separation. So you don't have to be uh, uh, believing in some other God and not believing. If you just say atheist, you don't believe in anything also, you're still in sin. That's why we die. So it's telling them, you already are con condemned. But you call upon the name of Jesus, you are saved. Read, please, Romans chapter 10, 13 onwards to 15 to us. Uh, Romans chapter 10, 13 to 15. Romans 10, 13 to 15. 
For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on, him, on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in him will be saved. They don't call upon the name. You may be an atheist also, but he's still in sin. And that's why you die. So we don't believe. We stand condemned already. Because not believe the name of the God's one and only son. Next verse. This verse is very profound because uh, I'll read it and then I'll explain to you. Verse 19. This is the verdict. Light has come into darkness. Light has come into the world. Light has come into the uh, uh, world. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. This is the verse the Lord gave me when I uh, uh, began to share the gospel after I became a believer. And many people reject the gospel. They wouldn't listen. I thought, Lord, this is good news. It's about the gift of salvation. Why do people reject the good news? I want to know from the Bible, Lord, why some people reject this good news? Who doesn't like good news? We all like good news. No? And this is an amazing aspect of the gift of salvation given free to all people. Why do people reject the good news? This question I put to the Lord in 1980, around the middle of, uh, sorry, middle of June, 1980. And the Lord gave me the answer on this verse. This is the verdict. The word verdict also means judgment. This is what decides. And the word uh, Greek word is crisis. K-R-I-S-I-S. <clears throat> this is the judgment. This is the verdict. Let us come into the world. Christ is light of the world. The world is full of darkness. And he is the light. In John 8, 12, he says, I am the light of this world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That is come to the world, but men love doctors other light because the deeds are evil. Here, doctor refers to the evil world. Light refers to kingdom of light, kingdom of God. Darkness is the dominion of darkness. Occult world, the evil world. And men love darkness other than light because the deeds are evil. <clears throat> They're very short-sighted people. Want to continue in sin, even though they knew, they were told that they can be delivered from sin. They love darkness other than light because the deeds are evil. They want to continue in the evil deeds. Short-sighted people. Temporary pleasures of sin for that sake, they rejected a far greater gift, the greatest gift one can receive, gift of salvation. So God won't force his will. He loved the whole world, gave Christ as a gift to the whole world. 1 John 2, 2 says, he is atoning, atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. God is not partial. He came for everybody. He gave a gift to everybody. The gift has to be received. You don't receive it, you can't enjoy the gift. So these people spoken of here, they love darkness, rather deeds of darkness, rather than light. They want to continue in sin. Short-sighted people living by the temporary pressures of sin and forsaking eternal salvation, which is a gift from God, can't be earned, but is received. From God's side, from his perspective, this gift is for all people of this world. 1 John 2.2, 2, atoning sacrifice for sins of the whole world, for everybody. Doesn't want anyone to perish. We we'll read Second uh, Peter three nine, please, Shani. Uh, to argue two references, Second Peter three nine, and also First Timothy chapter two verse four. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. Also, first uh, Timothy chapter two, maybe verse four and five. Four and five. First Timothy two, four and five. 
Yes, please. Right. Shall I read the previous verse? This is okay. right and is acceptable in the sight of the God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God, there is un also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. Ransom for all. He paid the price of sins for all people. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to be saved. That's the heart of God. But while that's the heart of God, the will of God all should be saved. He has given a gift to everybody. But if they don't receive that gift, it's not theirs. So we can't blame God for people not accepting Jesus. It's their uh, free will to reject Jesus. Unfortunate, but the reality in the world. So don't feel bad that people reject the gospel. They love the world more than God. And even God won't force his will. He'll never force his will. That's the nature of God. He's omnipotent, yes. Omniscient, knows everything. Omnipotent, can do everything. And he's also omnipresent. He's, he fills her, earth in, uh, with the spirit. But then he won't force his will. He can force his will if he wants to. Omnipotent. But he wants us to use our own free will to find out his will and do his will. Let me repeat that. He wants people of this world to use their free will to find out his will and do his will. And his will is Everybody in the world calls upon the name of Jesus and is saved. Praise God for this gift of salvation. Okay, let's go to the 20th verse. Everyone who does evil hates the light, will not come into the light of fear that his deeds will be exposed. The word uh, who does evil also means continues to do evil. Everyone who does means the present tense, the present actual continuous tense. Who keeps on doing evil, hates the light, will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. That's why people are angry with Jesus and even hate him. When he walked this earth, there are people who hated him. When we share gospel, sometimes people hate us also. Imagine a sinless person, God become man, sinless, being hated by people. Why would people hate someone who is sinless? The Lord told his own brothers, who at that time were not believers, why, how the people hate him. Please read uh, the seventh chapter of John, verse 7. Before that, let me explain to you <clears throat> the background. It's the Feast of Tabernacles that's starting. It's the eight-day feast. And the early first few days, he's in Galilee. Uh, and uh, his brothers tell him who are not believers that time. They were not believers in him. And uh, they were telling him, go and show yourself in the temple. Feast of Tabernacles. Go and show yourself. You have got to be great. Go and show yourself. And he explains to them, okay, maybe you can read verse 1 to 7. 7th verse what I want you to focus on, how they hated Jesus. And uh, verse 1 to 7, we read for the sake of the background. <clears throat> John 7, 1 to 7. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now, the Jewish festival of booths that is, Tabernacles, was near. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one can see the work, for no one wants to be widely known acts, for no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world, for not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. Verse 7, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify against it that its works are evil. He said his own brothers, <clears throat> who at that time were not believers in him. Later on, they became believers. And that's why James and uh, uh, Judah, uh, Jude, Jude is actually uh, uh, brother of Jesus, and so is James. book of James is written by Jesus' brother. And so also Jude. He had four brothers. James, Joseph, Judah, and Simon. Judah and Judah, same. James is James. Joseph is uh, another brother. And Simon, four brothers. He had some sisters also. Mark 6, chapter 3 tells us that. So, But at that time, the Feast of Tabernacles, which was a few weeks before the Passover, uh, they didn't believe in him. And his own brothers, he tells, the world cannot hate you. 
but it hits me. For I testify what it does is evil. When people do evil and we tell them they're doing evil, we are be faithful to the truth, then they'll hate us. They hated Jesus. Can you imagine that? They want to continue on sin. They don't like to be reminded they are in sin. Their conscience tells us they are sinning. They don't want to be reminded about that. They're like an uh, ostrich putting a head under the ground, thinking the whole world doesn't exist. So they're in sin. They want to continue on sin. And although the gospel is something that makes us understand we are delivered of sin, don't want to continue. They don't want to turn to Jesus. They love doctrine other than light. That's a state of mankind. Heart of man, very deceitful. Verse 21. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. So that may be seen. Plainly what he has done has been done through God. When you live by the truth, truth is Jesus. When you live by his teachings, we come into the light. Meaning, we have a clear path ahead of us. We are not in darkness anymore. Living by the truth means following Jesus. Living by his instructions. And in John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of this world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, will have the light of life. Light of life is a beautiful term, a phrase used in the Old Testament time about people, some people, who do not see the light of life. We explain the light of life when we follow Jesus. A follower is a disciple. Please remember the Great Commission, Lord commissioned disciples to go and make disciples, not make converts. A disciple is a follower of Christ. In fact, Acts 11.26 says, this is the first called Christian in Antioch. Who are called Christians? Not converts, disciples who follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, then you're no longer in darkness. You'll have the light of life. Through the cross, Christ had redeemed us from the dominion of darkness, the entire realm of darkness. Could you read Colossians chapter 1, 13, 14, please? Uh, shiny. Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. <clears throat> Lucians 1, 13, 14. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This power of darkness referred to in some Bibles as the dominion of darkness, and the realm of darkness. Darkness represents the evil forces. Before we turn to Christ, all of us were under devil's control. When you follow the world, we actually... Following the evil one. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 says. We don't realize that. Following the world is following the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Spirit work at those who are disobedient. We turn from following the world, following Jesus. And we become disciples. Now we have the light of life. He rescued us from dominion of darkness. Brought us into the kingdom of the sun he loves. We can enjoy the kingdom today. And we have the light of life. Let's read Old Testament. Psalm 49, uh, 16 to 20. Uh, Shani, Psalm 49, 16 to 20. And uh, there we'll find that phrase, light of life, somewhere along that. Let's read that passage, please. Psalm 49, 16 to 20. Do not be afraid when some become rich, when the wealth of their houses increase. For when they die, they will carry nothing away. Their wealth will not go down after them. Though in their lifetime they count themselves happy, for you are praised when you do well for yourself. They will go to the company of their ancestors, who will never again see the light. Mortals cannot abide in their form. They are like the animals that perish. Never see light. Actually, my Bible says light of life. They never see, they everything in the world, they will not see the light of life. Light of life. While living in this world, knowing fully well where you are going, a vision, a purpose for life. Otherwise, you are in darkness, groping in darkness. When you follow Jesus, there is no darkness anymore. And as you follow him, he will make the path very clear to us. He will make every rough path smooth. Isaiah 40, 40 to 16 says, God says, I will make every rough path smooth for you. Till you turn to Jesus, we are groping in darkness. Not only uh, darkness of the world, but uh, without a vision, without a purpose in life. Once you turn to Jesus, there is a purpose. 
and we have fulfilled that purpose we have the light of life so when you are in the light, when you are in the, in the when you in the truth all the truth that is jesus there is the light of life okay let's go to verse 22 that's where it ends his conversation with nicodemus ends with 21st verse this is what he spoke to nicodemus the verse, verse 2 to verse 21 of the third chapter is the conversation between him and nicodemus what have we told nicodemus is for us also nicodemus the teacher of the law he had to understand he need to understand that God loved the whole world, not just the Jews. Whole world he loved. That whosoever believes in, whether Jew or Gentile, will not perish but have everlasting life. He's the teacher of the law, Nicodemus. Member of the Jewish ruling council. Yet later on, when Jesus had was crucified at the cross, and people, Jews, believed in Jesus, Sanhedrin objected to that. May not be uh, Nicodemus objected, but uh, Others objected. Joseph Arimathea was also in the Jewish ruling council. He didn't agree with the decision. He didn't agree with the decision that uh, Jews, the, those who believe in Jesus should be ostracized from the synagogues. He was a secret believer himself. He feared the Jews. Joseph Arimathea, who took the body of Jesus and, and put in a tomb, his own tomb. They were all members of the ruling council. So this member of the ruling council who decided the matters of religion, religious things in, in Jerusalem was told by Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten son. Whoso believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So after he spoke to Nicodemus, verse 22 says, after this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. He baptized people, those who believe in him. Not only John the Baptist baptized, even Jesus baptized. It says very clearly, Judean countryside. Judean countryside is around area around Jerusalem, and uh, Bethlehem was in Judea, so was also Jerusalem, capital of uh, Judah. In the Judean hills, he was baptizing people, countryside, and baptized. Verse 23. Now, John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim because there was plenty of water, and people are coming, constantly coming to be baptized. Plenty of water. What does it mean? What does it imply? That baptism was immersion baptism, not sprinkling. Today the Christians are confused about baptism. How to be baptized? Sprinkling is not really baptism. It's a mockery of baptism. Going into the water, the old self buried with Christ in the water, coming out of the water, a new creation. So going baptism water is basically today, today's context. I defy with the death of Christ, resurrection of Christ. Those days, going to the water, old self, buried, repentance, coming out of the water, new creation. So you need a lot of water to get baptized. A few drops are not enough. So because there was much water there, he's baptizing at Anonia Salim, John the Baptist. Also, we read in the eighth chapter of Acts when Philip and the Ethiopian are interacting. And as the Ethiopian comes to understand who that person referred to in Isaiah 57 is Jesus. So why shouldn't we be baptized? Here's water. Why shouldn't we be baptized? Meaning, here's water for me to get baptized. Why can't I be baptized? Philip could not refuse baptism. They went into the water, came out of the water. So here very clearly says, he is baptizing at Enon near Salim on the river Jordan because there's plenty of water. And enough water for people to go into the water and come out of it. A few drops is not baptism. So very clearly it mentions here about true biblical baptism. Which is immersion, not sprinkling. We are John 3 23. Let's go to 24th verse. I'll stop with that. John also was okay, 23rd was over. 24th verse. This is before John was put in prison. Yeah, before he was put in prison. Ultimately, you know, he was beheaded by King Herod Antipas. And uh, ultimately, he finished his work, and therefore he was beheaded. God allowed him to be beheaded. Because his purpose was fulfilled. His purpose was pointing people to Jesus. Once they went to him, to Jesus, he also, also said, I must decrease, he must increase. And ultimately, when he finished his work, he was he went to be in God in heaven. And uh, the same way is a lesson for us. We fulfill God's purpose for our generation and we fall asleep. In closing, let's look at one verse about this completing our work on this earth. 
Uh, let's read Acts 13, 36. Acts 13, chapter 1, 36. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his generation, he died, was laid aside beside his ancestors and experienced corruption. Yeah, corruption means decay, body decay. He fulfilled his purpose for his generation. So all of us have purpose for our generation. Once we fulfill that, we will also fall asleep in Christ and be gathered into heaven. May God bless us. We'll continue with verse 25 on, uh, on uh, Wednesday. God bless you all.